Hi, my name is Sato Fujiwara. I'm happy to have this opportunity to introduce the latest trends in education technology in Japan. In this session, the wonderful panelists are here to talk about their online STEAM education. The main theme of this session is how we can foster competency through online education. We're going to discuss how we can enhance self-esteem, motivation, and enjoyment of learning through digital platforms. First, I'd like to give you a little background on this session. STEAM is a keyword for educational reform in Japan. Elements of STEAM are installed in the new national curriculum since 2020. For example, inquiry-based study of science and mathematics and inquiry-based cross-disciplinary study are implemented in all high schools authorized by the Japanese government. From my experience both in the US and in Japan, I think that some online education platforms in Japan excels well in competency development. This is my hypothesis, but the thing is, I think that innovators who strive to change the school environment used to be kids who felt oppressed by the restricting traditional education environment. People like this are very successful in increasing curiosity, self-affirmation, and motivation to learn through their services. They are from private sector, but they are not only making money, but also are contributing to society and public education. I'm very much looking forward to talking with these innovators today. So uh, let me introduce myself a bit. I founded an educational NPO, Kodai no Nai Gakko, in 2014. My team and I engaged in teacher education. We started a new project in the field of special education for kids with severe disabilities this year, I mean last year. From uh, 2014 to 2017, I lived in a town in Houston, Texas, and my daughter went to a public elementary school there. As you can see in the picture, I participated in the session Japan's EdTech to the World at South, South by Southwest EDU in 2016. Though online, I'm thrilled to be able to come back to South by Southwest. And my mission is inquiry for all and the NPO provides long-term intensive training for public and private teachers and school teachers. We also collaborate with leading educators, researchers, and professors inside and outside of Japan to expand the community. In 2018, uh, when I returned from the U.S., I had the chance to collaborate with the Graduate School of Education at Hightech High in San Diego, California. We brought Hightech High's teacher training for the Japanese teachers with support of the Japanese government, Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry. The photo below right was taken uh, with Larry Rosenstock, the founder of Hightech High. The photo at the bottom middle is with the team from the MIT Media Lab. We had creative learning workshop for Japanese educators in 2019. Okay, now I'm happy to introduce the panelists. First, Ian. He's the navigator of Inspire High. It's a popular platform that provides opportunities for students to meet with inspiring adults from around the world and to hear their values and social issues they engage in. Secondly, Sophia is in the team of global business development for Wonder Lab, a service that provides online puzzles called Think Think. These puzzles are a lot of fun, and my daughter was really into them when she was in elementary school. Please look forward to her presentation. Finally, Shinji, he used to be an engineer specializing in data analysis, but is now a magician navigator is seeking the ultimate form of learning that combines academics, games, and magic. His hobby is magic tricks, and he loves teaching magic tricks to children. Okay, Ian, uh, can you start with your presentation? Yes, uh, thank you so much for the introduction. My name is Ian Shimizu from Inspire High. 
Um, I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity for us to share our service at uh, South by Southwest um, and representing uh, EdTech in Japan. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to share a brief introduction, uh, a short presentation and a short video um, that outlines what we do. So we are called Inspire High and our tagline is expand your horizons. This is our logo. Um, and what we do in a nutshell is we inspire, uh, we connect preteens and teenage youth to the world's leading creative minds. And I want to briefly summarize our service in three points. So point one is that it's for preteens and teenage youth. Uh, we are focused on this age range because this is uh, what is called the springtime of development when the youth are undergoing tremendous change in their, um, in, in who they are and providing positive inspiration at this period of their lifetime has a great positive impact on their future outlook. Point two, we uh, invite global professionals as guides, all sorts of different people from all different walks of life. And I'll share a little bit more in detail about this later. Point three is our service is focused on exploring the why behind the what. Um, we do not talk about how, so we're not about how to play the piano or how to code, we share what our guides do and why they do that, why they're motivated to do that. And we do this because we believe it's extremely important in the landscape, the global landscape of today, that we are, we are sharing ways in which people are motivated to do things in this world because we believe motivation is the number one most important thing um, to create a better world for everybody. So a little bit more in detail about how our service is structured. So it starts with a 20 minute uh, video um, where people can um, hear the stories of the different guides, which is followed by an output uh, where um, there's a creative prompt given to the user uh, who puts their knowledge into practice. So they've learned in the first 20 minutes, they're now exercising that knowledge. And at the end, they're also given time to provide feedback to each other and reflect on what they just learned. And this is the curriculum that we build, which is then implemented in the school space. So students from all different walks of life across Japan currently uh, can experience this curriculum. We've had many different sessions with many different guides. Uh, I'll just share the top two uh, that you can see on the left hand. Uh, we've explored the theme of how can we change the world um, with Digital Minister of Taiwan, Audrey Tang. And we've explored the theme of what is identity with uh, Emmanuel Mankura, who is a Maasai tribe elder from Kenya, um, and many different people. We've had fisherwomen, we've had a psychologist, we've had comedians, we've had artists, we had rappers, uh, we've had social entrepreneurs, um, where we explore together different themes. And a little bit about what the experience is like from the perspective of the students. So we've seen that. Uh, they find our sessions interesting, um, that they have, it has become a positive opportunity for them to reevaluate um, what they might want to do in the future. And generally they feel very forward about joining another session afterwards. And this is just portion of the results that we've been getting from our surveys. Um, but earlier on, I mentioned that motivation is one of the most important aspects, uh, which we focus on. And what we've seen through our surveys, which we do on a regular basis after our sessions, is that the, the students who receive our sessions are, are very often motivated to either read more and learn more, are motivated to start a student group, are motivated to talk about something with their friends. Generally, they feel an approach motivation to, to take what they've learned and apply it to something else in their lives. So that's a little bit about what we do. And I'd like to wrap up with a video, which I have right here. The world is changing because of your participation in this conversation. So again, what we do is we connect teenage youth to the world's leading creative minds. <laughs> The best thing that I can say and advise is go out there. 
and we always follow up with a question. Okay, I saw. Are you ready for the Q&A? Yes, I am. Uh, so we have a question from Urawa Reds. Salt is soon as it's been released, or it's been released to the end of the day. Which is followed by an output time where the knowledge is being put into practice. Okay, Audrey, so today's output, the theme is creating new landscapes. And it kind of looks like this. It looks a little bit like、uh, Instagram almost,、um, where the different prompts are given in this manner and they are submitted by the students. And then, so from here, we start、uh, what is called the feedback time. Do you have any advice? You just give me that advice and I will repeat unmute yourself. And this is the time where the students are providing feedback to each other's outputs. So there's、uh, ample time for peer to peer learning because we believe learning from your peers is as important as learning from the guide. And so that's what we do. And we hope to expand the horizons of、uh, the students who、uh, use our service. And we hope to continue growing. Thank you. Thank you, Ian.、Um, so,、uh, Sophia, can you start your presentation? Um, thank you very much, Ian,、uh, for the great presentation. And、uh, thank you, Ms. Sato, for,、uh, for the kind introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Sophia Chen、uh, from Wonder Lab. So,、uh, you know, I'm very、uh, honored to be invited today、uh, to be、um, presenting、um, Japanese leading education technology at South by Southwest.、Um, so, today I prepared a brief presentation and a short video about my company. And、uh, our services. So、um, I hope you enjoy it.、Uh, so, to get started, I would like to first、uh, share Wonder Lab's mission. So, our mission is、uh, to bring out a sense of wonder within children. This is、um, you know, a brief category of what I will be sharing today.、Uh, so, let's、uh, first move forward to a little bit about Wonder Lab. So,、um, Wonder Lab, like I mentioned earlier, our mission is to bring out a sense of wonder、uh, in children around the world. And a little bit about us is that we are an education technology and tech company based in Japan, Tokyo,、uh, founded in、uh, the year of 2014.、Uh, we develop educational content and、uh, award winning ed tech products, such as Think Think,、um, to, serve it, uh, to serve our mission. A little bit about myself.、Um, I,、um, well, like, I'm ex-、uh, like, like I、um, introduced myself earlier, I'm Sophia Chin.、Uh, I'm originally from China,、um, but、um, I, was, um, I spent um, a, um, a long time in the United States and also lived in、um, different countries across、uh, multiple continents. Well,、uh, during college, I was、uh, dedicated to global education and have always been you know, actively, actively involved. Um, after I graduated uh, uh, Columbia University, I started、uh, my career as a management consultant、um, at Boston Consulting Group, where I had the you know, opportunity to work、um, in Japan and with the Japanese government to、uh, you know, develop educational related policies and、uh, you know, future talent strategy. Um, and uh, that's also where I came across Wonder Lab,、um, a great company where、uh, I get to you know,、um, learn more about the、uh, services in Japan and learn more about、um, a leading technology here that helps、uh, children in Japan、uh, with their uh, STEAM and、uh, SEL learning.、Um, so then I will move forward to、um, introduce a little bit about our product, Think Think. I would like to first、uh, share a product demo video、um, and then I'll explain,、uh, I'll, I'll explain a little further. According to the World Economic Forum, to thrive in the 21st century, students need more than traditional academic learning. Skills such as foundational literacies, including numeracy and science literacy, Competencies such as critical thinking and character qualities such as persistence, curiosity, and adaptability are crucial to students' future success. To cultivate such essential skills in children, we created ThinkBig, a digital learning app with over 120 types. 
20,000 mini problem sets, games, and puzzles that develop children's critical thinking skills and non-cognitive skills, with STEAM elements included. Big Think is developed with the joint effort of experts in K-12 education, critical thinking, UXUI, and gamification. As a unique digital learning material, Think Think currently has over 1.7 million users across 150 countries. It has received numerous accolades across the globe and is loved by both teachers and parents. In 2018, we worked closely with the Cambodian government, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, and Trio University to conduct an efficacy research of Think Think, covering 1,636 students across a three-month period. The findings were mind-blowing. Results confirm that children who use Think Think for the three-month trial period improved significantly on their average scores in math and IQ compared with the control group, which did not use Think Think. At Wonder Lab, our mission is to bring out a sense of wonder in children around the world, and we believe that Think Think is the best tool that will help them achieve that. So thank you so much for uh, watching the product demo video with me. And uh, to recap, I would like to uh, you know, briefly uh, introduce Think Think again. So as I mentioned in the video, it is a, an educational app that um, uses puzzles, mazes, and mini games to foster children's uh, critical thinking and uh, non-cognitive skills. So uh, we have um, a school edition and a home edition. So school edition is for educators and administrators so they, so they can use at schools. And uh, home edition is for parents. And uh, you know, parents can easily give uh, think think, um, provide think think on tablets um, and uh, you know, or iPads um, to their children without um, a lot of instructions, and uh, students can learn by themselves. So, like mentioned um, earlier, we currently have over 1.7 million uh, million users across. 150 countries. And actually, I would like to update the number a little bit. Uh, as I'm talking right now, our number um, has already increased to 2 million users. Uh, so it's another milestone for us. So we have, um, you know, over 2 million users across 150 countries now. Um, so in addition to that, um, we have, uh, you know, I would like to talk a little bit about the effectiveness of Think Think. So we focus on cultivating five areas of critical thinking skills for children, uh, you know, from trial and error, spatial awareness, uh, shape comprehension, logical thinking, and uh, numerical processing. Many of the skill sets are really hard to, uh, actually very hard for teachers to teach or for parents to teach at schools. And uh, Think Think made it uh, way easier uh, for parents and teachers to, you know, use a interactive tool for them to learn and also in a fun way, uh, you know, um, at school or at home. So when using Think Think, they um, wouldn't feel like they're uh, studying at all. It's actually they feel like they're playing because one of our philosophy is that um, children should, you know, learn and grow through playing. Uh, I will also like to cover some uh, non-cognitive skills that we aim to cult cultivate within children, which are confidence, uh, perseverance, uh, which is also called grit, um, curiosity, adaptability, and creativity. So um, like mentioned in the video, uh, we have uh, previously done a research in Cambodia with the Cambodian government. And also, uh, you know, um, we work closely with a renowned university called Keio University uh, in Japan and also uh, JICA. Uh, the Japan International Cooperation um, Agency. So um, based on the research, like, uh, like we mentioned earlier, um, it is effective on, on children's academic performance, IQ, and also their uh, non-cognitive skills. And uh, in, um, based on the research, uh, we can prove that it is effective for everyone, um, regardless of their gender, grade, uh, grade and uh, parental uh, education. We actually have another research uh, upcoming this year with uh, Johns Hopkins University. And again, we aim to uh, do further research on Think Think's um, efficacy, uh, focusing on um, how it can help students improve their uh, STEAM ability, especially focusing on math, critical thinking skills, and uh, their non-cognitive skills. So uh, thank you so much for, uh, you know, 
taking the time to, to uh, listen in to my presentation. Um, I would like to, uh, you know, further introduce our official website. Uh, feel free to check out more information on our website. And also, in the meantime, if you have any questions or concerns, you can always uh, contact us via the email address um, listed here. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, pass the baton um, to uh, Shinji, uh, and uh, he will give you a Yeah, so let's start. Um, hello, my name is Shinji from ThankQ. And what we do is actually making uh, game-based learning materials for children. So before going in detail, let me explain about me. Um, I'm CTO in ThankQ. And actually, I have a little bit different background. I used to be a kids magician for 12 years, uh, plus IT engineer. And two years ago, actually, I joined the educational area. So my passion is all about infueling entertainment into education. So let me explain what we do as a business. Um, we make a lot of game-based learning game, what we call Gakumon game. Um, Gaku actually is Japanese, and it, it means academics in English. And Mon is actually English, monster. So we are making many, many academics monster game. For example, chemistry Gakumon game, immune Gakumon game, economics Gakumon game, and every children can play it, and at the same time, they can learn each academic area. We have already made 24 academic fields game, and today, specifically, I'd like to introduce um, chemistry game, now, this is a chemistry game called uh, Atom Monster, and we this can be played offline and online in the both, in uh, either way. Uh, playing this game, children can learn how to combine atoms to make water molecules and so on, and the concepts of atoms and molecules. And let me share the scenario how children are playing the game. And as you can see, there are children from age five years old up to 15 years old, so everyone played the game, and enjoyed the game, and at the same time, learned the chemistry. Let me share the movie a little bit. So, you know, whenever I see this movie and scenarios, I, it's like I think that this is really a historical moment in chemistry education. Um, I have never seen children learning chemistry in this uh, joyful manner. So, yeah, that's what we are doing and in many other academic areas too. So this is comments from Atom Monster users. This is funny, so I want to share. Uh, the other day, my six-year-old son farted in front of me and said, sorry for my methane gas. And also, whenever he goes to the bathroom, he says ammonia comes out and so on. So that will be a proof that children is not only playing the game, but they are gaining the knowledge from it. Achievements, um, actually, we are selling these products in Amazon, Rakuten, in e-commerce, e -commerce, and we, are, we have bestseller. And we are also publishing comic books, and we are also offering our products to public schools. Uh, this will be the last slide. Our goal is actually to, you know, to make the world every adult or every people get a mission and pursue their goal. And to do that, at first we were offering project-based learning, but we realized that, you know, when we asked, okay, what do you want to do? What what are you interested in? And the children answers like, I, I don't know, my mother said uh, I should do chemistry, so why not doing chemistry project and so on. So we had a problem in, you know, we thought children doesn't, you know, have interest in the real world. So we made a, what we prioritize the first is curiosity to the world. And we want to achieve it through um, game-based learning, what we call Gakumon game and make children realize that every academic area deserves to learn and they are truly fun and they make your life colorful. And after that, they can go to the project-based learning.
So that's my explanation, and I'm looking forward to the talk session starting from now. So, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and actually, I was surprised when I saw on the panel speakers list because my daughter uh, has experienced all the all the three services, and she enjoyed all of them. And now uh, she is a um, high school student, and she is learning a lot from Inspire High. And, um, you know, on the thank you um, uh, online programs, uh, she was uh, very, uh, she, she had a uh, fun time when she was in the United States. And also, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to show you the slide again. The question slide. The, the first question is, uh, which competencies or skills do you think would be the most important in the future? Uh, if somebody uh, has an idea, you can start. Well, I think my last slide uh, mentioned it, so why not starting from me? Um, I think the most important skill in the future will be the curiosity. Technically, curiosity will be incre is included in non-cognitive skills, but, you know, so in that sense, I think within the non-cognitive skills, I think the curiosity is the most important skill because, you know, nowadays artificial intelligences are appearing, many people's work uh, will be replaced by the machines, computers, and so on. And nowadays, new concepts like basic income and so on uh, is appearing. So what that means is that our life will be easier in the future. Then what do we have to do next? Then the most important thing is to find out what you are interested in. And because you don't, maybe you don't have to make money at all and you don't have to worry about the money. Then uh, the most important thing is to be curious about everything and the ability to find what you can, you know, uh, be passionate about. So that's why I think the curiosity is the most important skill in the future. In the near future, maybe over 30 years or 40 years later. I'm not sure. Yeah, thank you, Shinji-san. I think you, I totally agree with you. And I think you have, uh, you mentioned some great points. Uh, definitely curiosity is one of the, the key skills, I would say, or, you know, uh, key competencies required for the future. Um, well, based on my understanding, actually, uh, you know, uh, um, I'm aware of the OECD uh, forum uh, framework of like, you know, uh, 21st century skills. And uh, me personally, I think, you know, within the, the frameworks, uh, the non-cognitive skills are definitely um, crucial uh, in the future. Um, for me, like at my company, uh, Wonder Labs uh, Think Think cultivates uh, critical thinking skills. Um, you know, based on my previous research and also based on my understanding, I personally believe that, you know, um, with the rapid development of technology, and uh, you can see that, you know, our lives have, uh, you know, have been revolutionized by technology, like having AI, robots. Like in the future, what differentiates, uh, you know, human beings would be our, I say, our human brains, right? Like, so, uh, like, I personally think critical thinking skills is also one of the crucial skills. And also other non-cognitive skills like, uh, you know, curiosity, adaptability, uh, communication, collaboration can help us, um, you know, create something new and, uh, uh, you know, make uh, revolutionize um, over the you know, overall landscape. And um, one more thing I'd like to ask, uh, uh, what I'd like to add is um, actually uh, design thinking as well. So I think, you know, having like design thinking, art thinking, like people are able to create new things. And uh, critical thinking is also, you know, the ability that people can identify and, uh, you know, come up with solutions. So, um, yeah, I think these are some of the, the skill sets that are crucial for the future. Yeah, thank you everyone for sharing such wisdom. Um, I basically agree with everything that was said. Um, and with a strong focus on curiosity as well. So at Inspire High, we, um, it's in the name, but we regard inspiration as being something that's extremely important. And it's since 2013 that there's been psychological studies around inspiration and exactly what it is. And I think 
inspiration is an interesting thing where everybody has experienced it. Uh, I think everybody on this panel can reflect on moments in their life where they felt inspired. What inspiration is, is it's actually a state of motivation. So one day you have, boom, a spark, and then you feel motivated to actually put that idea into form, into shape. And I think there's a huge hint there as to what's important for the future. Um, and I think we live in a world where there's so much content, where there's so much going on. I mean, you read the news every day and you're overwhelmed by just the, the amount of stuff that's happening in this world. And how do you weed out what's important to you, what's important to the world, and, and so on and so forth. I think it, it ultimately all comes down to what are you curious of and what can you feel motivated to do. And I think that's kind of the core area that the more we nurture, uh, the more positive change, both at a personal level and at a societal level, we'll be able to see. And in my personal experience, when I'm inspired to do something and when I feel like enacting that, the competencies that are generally mentioned in the OECD framework and other frameworks that I've seen come as a result of your strong drive to attain something. So the more that I'm motivated or compelled to, you know, say I have an idea and I want to bring that into fruition, I realize in that journey that I need to be able to do teamwork. I need to be able to think critically. I need to be able to think interdisciplinary in an interdisciplinary manner. Um, so again, it comes back always to me that the most fundamental thing that's important is that motivation and that curiosity that drives you forward. Because without that drive, you know, people can teach you how to be a critical thinker and, you know, you don't really have anywhere to apply it. So, yeah, you know, I do always come back to, uh, to, to the curiosity and the motivation part. And that's why we believe inspiration is important because inspiration is a state of motivation. So the more that we can inspire people, the more people are motivated. And we believe as a result, those competencies will be attained. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Ian, for uh, for sharing your thoughts. And I totally agree with the, uh, the point that you mentioned. Uh, you know, inspiration, it's closely related to motivation, right? And having the motivation, the drive, you know, to uh, to learn, to create is crucial to, like, I would say human being or, like, you know, especially to children's growth, right? So, um, actually, you know, um, when um, when we, like, when Wonder Lab uh, was started, like, you know, one of the things that we uh, noticed was that, um, I'm sure it's the same for, um, you know, uh, also, like, Shinji and you, Ian, like, when you uh, started your companies, you probably noticed that, you know, um, like, when children or when, let's say, teenagers, when they're learning, um, they're not, you know, um, the exact same like adults, right? You know, like they um, might be drawn to what they're interested in by their, you know, curiosity, by what, you know, motivates them. And, uh, you know, so at Wonder Lab, when we created like Think Think, actually, um, we had the, you know, main idea, we had the, you know, uh, thought of wanting to um, let kids like play with things. And once they are, you know, intrigued by things, once they like, you know, have, you know, the curiosity and also the motivation uh, to want to learn more and they're like, you know, feeling, uh, you know, like learning is fun and also they feel like really confident about what they can achieve, then they will open up a whole new world for them and they're willing to, you know, keep up with things and to continue. And it's, uh, it's like way more self-directed. So, you know, motivation, like to me personally, I think, you know, it helps with children's like uh, self-directed learning. And it's also what we So like kids, they, like, they're they never forced to play at all. And we even put a time limit on the application so they don't overplay it. So yeah, um, I would say, um, you know, one of the things uh, in our research that we did was also closely related to motivation. Like after using Think Think, um, you know, a lot of the student, students and also children, they uh, mentioned that they have a higher motivation to learn like math, to, you know, uh, to learn like STEAM knowledge and also uh, to be able to, to want to like, you know, explore and challenge themselves. So I think it's definitely one of the, the crucial skill sets to have. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think I really relate to that um, self-directed part. I think um, intrinsic motivation is extremely important rather than extrinsic motivation of being told what to do um, and doing it, but rather thinking, wow, like this is something that I'd love to do and then you doing it because 
you actually get to learn so much more when doing so. And around when I was starting Inspire High with the team, that um, there's a few of us that started together or kind of built the core pedagogy. Um, I was reflecting a lot on when I was a student, and by no means was I a good student. I I, I didn't really like school. I thought it was boring, um, and so on. I was I had a lot more fun being goofy in the classroom rather than being that kid in the front row studying. Um, and obviously, that's my fault as much as it is the system's uh, result. But anyhow, leaving my personal history aside, what I do remember a lot is that I, I couldn't feel very curious about what was being taught in the classroom because at that point in my life, it didn't feel so connected to the real world. So I think oftentimes you hear students in the classroom saying, you know, why should I study math? Like, when are we ever going to use this? Um, and oftentimes you don't, but there are certain careers where you'll be using it every single day. But a lot of the time we have no idea that there are careers like that, which made me realize that there's, a, there's, there's this rift between the classroom and the millions of walks of life that exist out there and how there is actually a connection between what we're learning and the real life out there. But we don't feel motivated to learn what's being taught in front of us because we have no idea of what life after all this is about. So what I'm trying to say is that there's no real reason to be curious about what's being taught in the classroom when you don't really know how it's going to be applied. And so what we're really trying to do at Inspire High is also bridge that gap, which essentially is giving people a reason to be curious. So the moment you learn that, oh, there's this person, Audrey Tang, who applied his developing um, development and coding knowledge to actually contain the spread of COVID in Taiwan, you suddenly think, whoa, programming and computer science is cool. Like, maybe I want to do that. I've always been kind of curious. And oh, in order to do that, it helps to learn math? Okay, now math makes sense to me. Um, so, it's, so it's also that bridge that we're trying to um, create so as there is a reason for the students to be curious about what's being taught in front of them. And I think what I love about this panel is that everybody is approaching this question of curiosity from a different angle um, with, I think, you know, something that's more fun than just the normal uh, curriculum um, being taught in schools today. Um, so I personally am taking great inspiration from this panel already. No, um, let me let me tell you the my experience as a magician because you know as a magician you perform in front of children then you know there is no excuse to make children bored. That's as an entertainer that's no excuse. But you know when it comes to the education it's like okay please study this one and please be patient with you can connect with the real world in ten years or twenty years but. Just for now, study chemistry, and you know, the future will come in ten years and twenty years. And I think this attitude is so arrogant as an educator. I just don't want to make someone bored, make someone lose curiosity to something, for the sake of the you know future. So I mean, for the future. So yeah, so that's really my passion to make you know, interact with the real world at that moment for the children, at this moment for the children. So, yeah, I really agree with you. Yes, totally. You see, like, Shinji, um, you know, Shinji, you brought up a great point. And I, I think, you know, you mentioned that education should be not only just focusing on the future, but also the present, right? Because one yeah. thing is that, uh, you know, children, they don't lie about their, you know, reactions, right? Like, okay, maybe, you know, to some sort of like, you know, based on the developmental psychology or development of children, they can start to lie at some point. But if they're genuinely into something, you know, their reactions are real. It's, you know, genuine. Like, for example, you know, um, I, I, you know I'm sure like, you know, Shinji, your product is like, you know, great and also really, really fun. And like the video you showed earlier, right? Like children were having so much fun. And uh, it's something you can see, it's tangible. Actually, same for Wonder Lab. Like at Wonder Lab, we uh, host biweekly classes within their office to, uh, you know, give out a think thing for children to play for free and to see their react, uh, see their reactions. And uh, at Wonder Lab, like when we develop our product, um, actually we have this like very, um, I would say like a, the the cycle, product cycle that we're really proud of is that. You know, from, you know, idea generation to product creation, we make sure that we always work with kids closely 
to see their reactions and then receive feedback from them and then we enhance our pods. So it's not like, you know, um, adults that are creating, you know, products or like interesting content for adults, but it's more like whatever children they want to play, you know, with, you know, a, a touch of, uh, you know, what we hope they can, you know, acquire, like what kind of skill sets we hope they can acquire acquire uh, for the future but they have to be able to have fun in the present right they have to feel motivated mm -hmm. yeah. and we want to learn so so yeah i would say um this kind of approach is definitely very important not just uh you know for uh education in, in japan so like for the future um especially what you know education technology or you know can bring and can uh, you know can um, let's say change the overall landscape at scale yeah, um, it is quite interesting to you know, hear your uh, stories, and it's, I, I, pers I personally think that the education is like you know, everybody is on the journey to know yourself, and um, you know, uh, everybody wants to know what you like, and everybody wants to know what you value and what you can do, and um, uh, and in that context, and critical thinking and curiosity and. Inspire, inspiration, uh, all very in, important. And uh, as Piaget, uh, the psychologist said, that uh, you know, kids see the world and feel the world and inspired by the world, and they they gonna you know catch those things into and, and bring it into themselves, and they're gonna cr create um, themselves. And so it's quite important that um, the the educators has to um, give such inspiration or experience. Uh, and, uh, but uh, at school, sometimes teachers are failing to do that kind of things, or you know, um, um, to to you know stimulate their mot motivation. Uh, what do you think? Uh, do you have any advice to the teachers? That's a hard one because um, I also understand how difficult it is to be teaching the same classroom every single day. Mm -hmm. And I understand that at a cognitive level, not at the experiential level, but surely it's, you know, you only have so many tricks in your sleeve and, you know, you can't, <laughs> if, if the sole goal is entertainment, then sometimes maybe you're missing the mark on certain things. Um, so that's really hard to say, especially I, because I think the, the teachers are really doing the hard work that, you know, and we're kind of at that position of like, how can we help to make, you know, to, to hopefully improve the quality of your work and the quality of the education that you provide um, in front of that. But some of the things that we try to do from that vantage point is we try to make Inspire High as easy to implement as possible in the school place. because. Um, I think there's a huge poverty in time when it comes to teachers and, the, and, and you know, just the resource of time they have is so limited that we want to make it as easy as possible to implement. So that's why it's tailored so that it's very easy to just um, put into the classroom. And if you want to use the videos as a standalone and um, create a classroom around it uh, through your own initiative and through your own structure, you can also do that as well. So a great deal of flexibility, but also there's a structure which we um, make available for teachers to implement uh, straight away. Um, so yeah, it's very difficult for me to talk about advice, but um, in the spirit of kind of wanting to help to make the education place as inspiring as possible, we try to lower as much as possible the hurdle of implementation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I really like the idea that Ian uh, mentioned, uh, you know, being able to customize, right, and also allowing, you know, people to, you know, it, learn individually, right, and also allowing teachers to give that tool to, to students and, uh, you know, they can be inspired and they, they can learn from other people. And I, I honestly think, you know, from now on, like in the future, in, in terms of like education, it will become more, or, or at least I hope, it will become more uh, you know, customized and more tailored to like, you know, based on students' needs. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I think, uh, you know, education technology can do to, to students or to classrooms, to teachers is that, you know, products 
um, that allow uh, you know allow people to customize and to tailor like curriculum or to learn by themselves will give so much flexibility. So one thing like uh, when we created like Think Think at uh, Wonder Lab is that you know um, it, we have a we created a school edition, right? So we want to make sure that teachers they have the control that they can use. Uh, you know, think think in classrooms, and they can monitor you know the performances of students and understand how students are progressing. However, students they can play on their own. Um, you know, can they learn by themselves in their own time? So having that flexibility, I think, is great. So I guess in terms of like advice, I want to give the you know I hope or I know I'm uh, by no means I'm not like you know a very experienced educator. Although I, I did some curriculum design, some teaching in the past, but I'm not. I'm sure there are many, many like other more educated. Uh, I mean, sorry, more ed experienced educators out there. So uh, uh, I might be able to offer my two cents. But uh, I, I guess um, my advice is um, maybe try to look at uh, students in a more individual perspective and try to, uh, you know, tailor approaches when teaching them. And one more thing, I guess for me, uh, based on my previous like teaching experience and also like experience as a curriculum designer, uh, I think, uh, you know, I'd like to actually share, a, you know, a, a, an interesting story was when I was teaching in um, a small town near Venice, I, um, I guess I used to think like, you know, teachers, they're supposed to teach and pass on knowledge to students. And that was what I thought, you know, but what I learned was that actually one of the students, you know, uh, when I was interacting with him and um, he was only like, uh, I think third grade, a third grader. Um, I, I used to think, oh, I'm way more knowledgeable than him, and I would be able to teach so much to him. But I was totally wrong because when I was, with, was interacting with him and also the rest of the class, I realized that I'm learning so much from them as well. So, you know, what I learned was that, you know, in teaching or learning education, it shouldn't be one sided. It should be like, you know, multi sided or even, you know, interactive. So that's why I think in the future, when I, I, I guess hopefully, like when teachers, um, are um, trying to, you know, pass on their knowledge to children. It's um, it's not just one sided. Uh, they can put think of themselves as like learners as well. They can also learn from students, and also, you know, because everyone is so different. I think individualized learning, like implementing like education technology, will uh, you know, help them and will be able to alleviate uh, their burden, like when it comes to individualization, you know, a little bit. Thank you. Um... Do you have any comments, Shinji? Yeah, I completely agree with you, but I just want to talk from other perspective. I think, you know, let, let, let's talk about the Japanese education. Teachers in Japan is doing well because seeing the international scores, Japan is ranked in higher uh, positions. So in terms of cognitive skills, teachers in Japan are doing very, very well. But when it comes to the like motivation and curiosity and so on, there's not so many stats about that. But I found one data saying that Japan is the worst when it comes to whether the children like learning in school. So in that case, Japan ranked the worst. So, you know, to solve this problem, um, I think, you know, using our product is surely one way and using, you know, Sophia's product, Ian's product is good. But to do that, I think teachers need more freedom to choose products and materials. You know? But, you know, current Japanese education system doesn't allow that to teachers. You know, teachers always have to use a specified textbooks and so on. So I think that's the um, problem of a system teacher, individual teacher actually cannot change a lot. So we have to think about how to change the system itself. Yeah, I, I definitely want to add to that. I think, um, you know, kind of how I think one big shift that we're seeing in this world today is that um, collaboration is becoming a more key concept wherever you are, whether you're in the government or whether you're an established company or whether you're a startup, this spirit of collaboration and partnership um, is becoming increasingly important because cross-pollination um, between different parties, different entities, different organizations, different schools of thought is kind of one of the most important things when thinking about progress. And I think what we're seeing today is that that has to be applied to the education place as well. So public schools, which until now I think had a very closed approach of saying, 
well, no, this is the system, this is the education style, and that's it, um, are going to have to, in a way of adapting to the demands of the world, open up and implement Think Think, implement Tank you, implement Inspire High, um, since that is really what's going to propel progress in the classroom. Um, and I think that's probably the case anywhere you are in the world, that collaboration uh, between parties like, you know, small organizations like us and the education system at large can work together to really open up and change that system. Um, although, Shinji, in the case of Japan, I definitely agree with you that the poverty of time and the poverty of resources when it comes to what um, is at hand for the teachers is a structural issue that needs to be resolved. It's insane and it needs to change now. It needed to change 10 years ago um, and it can't go on like this. Yeah. Absolutely. And as um, I actually, as an outsider, well, I was um, more educated in uh, the United States, but uh, you know, as an outsider, um, based on my, uh, you know, few years of um, experience working in Japan and also, uh, you know, interacting closely with the Japanese education system, I can definitely, uh, you know, resonate with uh, what Ian and uh, Shinji just mentioned. I, I do think that, you know, teachers should have more freedom to, uh, you know, choose uh, the curriculum, or I say they could, they can have like standards to follow, but I think they should have some freedom to, you know, customize or to, to you know, add more, uh, you know, to innovate and add more uh, interesting content to, to the existing curriculum. Uh, of course, I understand there are challenges, there's like poverty of time, and I, I do think, yeah, th these are some of the things that are making it difficult. However, uh, you know, I, I do want to say that, you know, um, in Japan, I'm constantly impressed by how dedicated the teachers are and how de dedicated the educators are uh, when it comes to their uh, their students. I would say like in Japan, like, uh, you know, teachers aren't just teaching students. It's almost like they're raising like kids of, of their own. So uh, I, I would say I'm kind of impressed in that sense. But I, I um, you know, in terms of a Japanese education system or, you know, overall education compared to the rest of the world, I would say, yeah, a little bit of more flexibility uh, would be very helpful. And also, uh, you know, in terms of like, you know, education technology, right? Like in terms of uh, products uh, like us, uh, I think, you know, um, schools that, you know, um, in Japan, they um, might be hesitant to, to, to implement some of the technologies because uh, they might worry about effectiveness or they might worry about, you know, security issues and all that. I totally understand that sometimes they might be risk averse, but I think, you know, some of these risks should be worth taking. Um, and, uh, you know, it will definitely, um, I would say, overall change uh, the, the education landscape here um, in Japan and will help students um, broaden their, you know, like broaden their horizon and broaden their uh, ways to learn. So they have more uh, choices to choose how they want to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm in charge of teacher training and I just, um, I'm trying to um, uh, send, a mes send a message to teachers like, you know, uh, just enjoy your life, you know. The, the life is so fun and uh, the things are happening, amazing things are happening outside of, outside of textbooks. And if you're going to really, uh, uh, you know, uh, inspire by this book, you So I also have a question for you that uh, they collaborate with outside of school people, and then the curriculum will be good. So, uh, so maybe uh, we need to um, uh, finish our conversation. But uh, if you um, uh, give the audience a word, uh, uh, can you can you do that? Um, maybe uh, can you start? Uh, uh, Ian, can you start with you? For sure. So, um, yeah, I think. Uh, this conversation was great. I, I think I, it's really kind of helped me understand where education will le start going towards. And I think it's deeper collaboration between existing schools and people who are outside of the conventional education system working hard to and be really good at one element of that education. So I think in our case, that's connecting these inspiring people around the world and plugging them into the school place as to expand the horizons of the students. And Think Think and Thank You are approaching um, different uh, ways of specializing in extremely essential areas of education, and I and I and I really look forward to the evolution of education moving forward, where 
there's deeper collaboration and ultimately what all of that um, is working towards is increasing the non-cognitive abilities to the students in a world where those skills are in increasing demand. Um, and that's, that's kind of a very systematic way to put it, but what I really want to say is that the, the world needs curious and creative people, and we are working really hard to ensure that people have that curiosity and motivation, and that requires collaboration. Um, and I'm hopeful that that's going to happen with great players like um, Think Think and Tanq uh, working on that uh, within the same landscape of Japan. I really enjoyed today. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Yang. So, um, can you, um, Sophia or Shinji, can you talk a little bit? Um, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, first off, thank you, uh, Ms. Sato, for the, the great um, you know, conversa uh, conversation. And also, thank you, uh, Yun, for offering your thoughts. Um, so yeah, for me personally, uh, again, it's such a, an honor to be invited and uh, I I had a great uh, you know, discussion with every, like all of the panelists. And um, I personally think it's a great learning experience for me as well. Well, um, if I were to share something with the audience, I would say um, two things. First thing is that, you know, uh, Japan is changing and uh, education technology uh, players, well, education technology and also uh, ed tech companies and players here in Japan, they are really innovating and there are many interesting players like us. So, uh, you know, at South by Southwest, I really hope, you know, um, like, you know, other uh, panels mentioned, we hope to collaborate with more players outside of the schools, outside of our companies, also outside of our country. I really hope that, you know, um, like at least for uh, Wonder Lab, we're uh, all, uh, currently also expanding overseas. We really hope to have, you know, potential opportunities that we can collaborate with, you know, schools overseas to help more children uh, learn and help more children, you know, bring out, to bring out their sense of wonder and to cultivate critical thinking skills and uh, their non-cognitive skills. So, um, and I look forward to, you know, receiving feedback from educators overseas and, you know, children overseas uh, to further enhance our product, but also, you know, to make a broader uh, impact on the society. And the second thing I'd like to share is actually, uh, I really want to, you know, you have put into so much effort on uh, you know, life changing. Me personally, uh, you know, education changed my life. And, uh, you know, I really want to say you know, thank you to all of you. And I, I you know, look forward to work with all of the, um, you know, educators or any educator related, uh, I would say, for example, education related, like, uh, regardless of their goals. I, like, I wanted to thank all of them. And I really look forward to work, working with you to, uh, you know, innovate uh, the industry and the landscape. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much. Um, it was so honor for me to have a chat here. And, you know, it was so stimulating. And uh, the company here, me, Sophia San, Ian, is doing very, very progressive education service. And I was thinking that at the same time, I really pay respect to the conservative educational service too, because when, I, when we think about the education, we also have to, you know, think about the aspect of how we maintain the nation, society, and so on. And in that case, uh, system, the education system right now is like a teaching, you know, cramming the knowledge into children. That's also, you know, maybe necessary, a little bit necessary. So there are many elements for education, so we need to find some holistic optimization, not a partly. So I'm doing really, you know, I'm just focusing on the curiosity for children, but I really understand there are many aspects we have to take care of in education. So yeah, this session was really good to rethink about, you know, many elements in education and yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was so fun. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Ian, um, uh, Sophia, and Shinji. I really enjoyed the, the discussion here. Uh, and uh, our talk was, uh, I hope that uh, this talk was uh, meaningful, meaningful for audience. And thank you very much. So maybe bye bye here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Really enjoyed this. And thank you for your facilitation, Sato. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
拜。